Put aside the morality of that for a moment. Just the political suicide. Who in this country likes Benjamin Netanyahu? Why are you going to bat for Benjamin Netanyahu? Why are you risking American democracy for Benjamin Netanyahu? Why are you risking your re-election for Benjamin Netanyahu? Why? Believe it, believe it. Please welcome to the stage the hardest working man in political digital media. It's friend of the pod, Mehdi Hassan. Good to see ya. Hi, Mehdi. How's it going? It's good to see you again. You know, you've been on Pod Save America. You haven't been on Love It or Leave It. I think this no, is I your haven't. first time. It's my first time. All right. Well, you know. Good to see you all. I can't see anyone, but good to see you all. So let's start with this. What do you think of Speaker Mike Johnson heading up to Columbia to call on the president of that school to resign? Do you think he isn't busy? I think it tells you everything you need to know about the president of Columbia, that she sent the police after her own students to try and appease the GOP and discovered that you can't appease the GOP. Now everyone wants her gone right and left. So she made that bed. She has to sleep in it. Uh, about the trip, uh, about the speaker's trip, you said, congratulations, everyone. You've given the GOP exactly what they wanted and needed, an excuse to pretend to care about anti-Semitism despite a caucus filled with raging white supremacists uh, and a, a conference with, a, uh, and, and who attend conferences with a Holocaust denier and a candidate who hosts that Holocaust denier. Uh, at an Earth Day event this week, President Biden said, I condemn the anti-Semitic protest, and I also condemn those who don't understand what's going on with the Palestinians. So he's trying to, he, they put out a statement that just denounced anti-Semitism. It seems like he's trying to say, I want to separate out the, 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 the anti-Semitic actions that have taken place around, but not led by the students, around the protests, and separate that from the cause of the students, and to say that, you know, to try to not fall into the same trap. What do you, what, what do you think he should be saying? This might not win me a lot of applause with this crowd, but I wish Joe Biden would understand what's going on with the Palestinians as well. Oh, good. I do worry that he has now opened the door. The Democrats, liberal media, whoever you want to call it, have opened the door for people like Mike Johnson and Elise Stefanik and Donald J. Trump to pretend that they are friends of the Jewish people. Elise Stefanik, who pushed the Great Replacement Theory. Donald Trump, who hosted Nick Fuentes for Thanksgiving dinner. Paul Gosar, who goes to Holocaust denial conferences. It is ridiculous that we've got to a point now where Republicans can posture and pretend to be friends of any minority community in this country. But that's because... People in the Democratic Party need to fight much stronger, need to call these people out as white supremacists. Stop. I hear Democratic senators say, my friends in the Republican Party. John, have you ever heard a Republican say, my friends in the Democratic Party? I haven't. But look, Republicans don't need Democrats. Democrats often do help, but Republicans don't need Democrats' help Agreed. to demagogue an issue, right? Agreed. They brought, it wasn't Democrats that fucked up that hearing. It was the, the presidents of the college themselves that kind of fell into the trap that Stefanik had set. No, but the entire anti-Semitism debate, which has been hijacked by Republicans for a long time. Let's be very clear. After October the 7th, a bunch of Republicans went out and said crazy, shitty, genocidal things. Like the Tom Cottons, the Josh Hawleys, the, you know, the long list of Republicans. People I'd never heard of, like House Republicans. I didn't know this person exists, but he came out to say, you know, turn Gaza into a parking lot. And all of this Lindsey Graham, you know, what was it Tom Cotton said, bounce rubble. They can say this genocidal stuff about Palestinians. And yet, who is the only member of Congress who is censured? the one Palestinian American woman in Congress. That, unfortunately, and, a, and a, a bunch of Democrats voted for that, let's not forget. So that kind of stuff really bothers me because you really are just giving them a pass uh, to pretend to be friends or, 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 good, or, or good faith on this issue. They're not good faith on this issue. Yeah, it does, it does speak to one of the challenges of the politics, right? Because there's where Democrats are, there's where Republicans are, there's where the students are. And there are a lot of Democrats who feel like they need to walk a more kind of politically delicate line. And I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I'm not happy about it, John. Um, I'm not happy to see Josh Gottheimer and Jared Moskowitz and a bunch of House Democrats turn up at the Columbia campus to join in the demagoguery. Uh, did they turn up at the Columbia campus a couple of months ago when pro-Palestinian students were skunk sprayed and Columbia did nothing? Uh, did they turn up in Stanford when an Arab American student was run over by a car? Did they turn up in Vermont when three Palestinian students were shot, one of whom is now disabled for life? Did they turn up in Illinois when a six-year-old Palestinian kid was stabbed to death in front of his mother shortly after October 7th? Like, I, I just worry about the demagoguing. Jackie Rosen, senator from Nevada, very, you know, now, she, just, she just came out against a Muslim judge that the Biden administration was trying to put on the court. She 
went with the Republicans on this. And then she comes out this week talking about anti-Semitism. I would just like to see some consistency. Can we denounce bigotry across the board? Anti-Muslim and anti-Jewish and anti-gay and anti-transgender across the board. It's not hard. Right. Well, it's not hard. And yet it does seem like we make it look hard. And, and I guess where is the space for... Biden is trying to do that, right? Isn't that what Biden is trying to do in this kind of a statement, right? To say, we denou- he, they, he put out statements and has denounced anti-Semitic and uh, anti-Muslim violence. My issue with Joe Biden is not the statements or the rhetoric. It's the policy. It's the policy. You can't say there's a red line not to go in a rafa and then say, remember you worked for Barack Obama. He's the guy who was famously red line in Syria. Do you remember the red line in Syria? Mm. He got battered for that red line. I mean, Biden's red line is worse because he's saying, no, don't go into Rafa. Yay, we agree with you, Joe Biden. Thank God you said that. But take billions of dollars in weapons as you say you're going to go into Rafa, right? This is the problem fundamentally. Since You know, we see this stuff. We see all these drip, 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 drip. He doesn't like Netanyahu. He's very upset behind the scenes. A lot of leaks to Barack Ravid and other reporters. You know, he dropped an F-bomb on BB in private. Great. Come out and say it in public. Come yeah. out and say it in public and come out and do something about it. They're also, politically... Put aside, put aside the morality of selling weapons to a government that is bombing residential apartment buildings, refugee camps, hospitals, schools, cemeteries, mosques, churches. Put aside the morality of that for a moment. Just the political suicide. Who in this country likes Benjamin Netanyahu? Why are you going to bat for Benjamin Netanyahu? Why are you risking American democracy for Benjamin Netanyahu? Why are you risking your re-election for Benjamin Netanyahu? Why? I, I, Why? I, bang my, I feel like banging my head on a wall well, every day, John. So I... I I'm actually just curious if you can try to answer that question because no, but the reason I say that is I come back to why are people participating? There is a, a movement to say, I mean, look, the, the, there's a, a huge variety of opinions, many of which I completely disagree with among anti a pro-Palestinian and anti-Israel protests. But there is clearly a consensus of some kind around believing that Israel has a right to safety and freedom, that the Palestinian people deserve dignity and self-determination and safety, and that the, the way Israel is conducting this war is abhorrent and shouldn't go on while respecting Israel's right to exist and defend itself. There's clearly a coalition that agrees with that, and yet we can't do even a modest thing like condition aid uh, that we are sending. There isn't an appetite politically for that in Congress. Joe Biden doesn't see the value, or at least uh, 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 sees it, whether strategically or politically, more valuable to keep his criticisms or his more fulsome criticisms private, though he has pushed Israel a little bit more lately. What explains that? It's a great question. I've spoken to members of Congress. I've spoken to people in the DNC. I've spoken to Democratic operatives. You get different answers. Who is driving this? Is it the people around Biden? Is this Biden himself? There's a lot of debate about, is this Biden the guy who loved Golda Meir? No one quite knows who is in the driving seat? Because, of course, people brief to journalists different things. A lot of yeah. White House aides will say, oh, we don't agree with the president on this. And then there's people who say, Joe Biden's very upset about this. I don't know. But it's a real problem when we live in it. You talked about conditioning aid. I never thought I would live to see the day when Nancy Pelosi said, let's condition arms to Israel. When Chuck Schumer would come out and say, Benjamin Netanyahu has got to go. Israeli government's an obstacle to peace. Right? So there are people in Congress who've traditionally been very aligned with Israel. Even they're saying, this is too much. If only the Biden White House could... Maybe try and lead that, build on that. This whole behind the scenes bullshit's got to end. It worked on October 8th or 9th. Let me give him a bear hug. Let me persuade him behind the scenes. We're nearly seven months in. 14,000 kids are dead. The behind the scenes bullshit has to stop. I'm sorry. So you're very, you're obviously very critical of, of Democrats and the president uh, when you view it as being warranted. On this issue. No, of course. I'm, I'm, I, uh, and uh, you also... Uh, are very clear-eyed about the threat posed by Trump. I don't, I don't see those two things as being in, in tension, but they do become in tension when it comes time to vote. Uh, how do you think about that? Hurts my head a lot. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, John. I, I, I've, I've been, I launched a new media company recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Zateo, shameless plug. Um, and I've been touring the country. I've been giving a lot of speeches in Ramadan. I spoke to a lot of Muslim crowds in Dallas, in Houston, in San Francisco, in Atlanta. Uh, all over the place, in Maryland, and every place the Q&A begins with, we can't vote for Trump the fascist, but we can't vote for Joe Biden who enabled genocide. That is the conversation that is going on in every Muslim American community, every Arab American community, and also a lot of black American communities in places like Georgia, as we see a lot of young students. It's a problem. I don't, there's no, I don't have an answer for it, right? And, and I had Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez at the launch of our event last week, and I said to her, how do you persuade 
somebody says I can't vote for Biden, what do you say? And she said, first thing she said is, look, I'm not going to tell a Palestinian who lost 20 members of his family, somebody in Dearborn, you've got to vote for Biden. That's just ridiculously offensive. But, you know, you have to set the scene and talk about what, what America do you want to live under? Uh, which government do you want to live under? Do you, which, you know, which democracy do you want to be part of? Do you still want democracy? And I mean, on this issue, I make one very simple point, which is, who does Benjamin Netanyahu and Itmar ben Gavir want to be the next president of the United States? They say Trump. So from that perspective, as critical as I am of Joe Biden, and I am very, very critical of Joe Biden on this issue, um, and I defended him a lot until October the 6th, um, the reality is the people we loathe, I think most of us loathe in the Israeli government, um, they want Donald Trump to be president. So I think we should bear that in mind when we go to the polling stations. So a new Harvard youth poll just came out, uh, I believe today, a big poll of 18 to 29 year olds. The top three issues for young people were housing, inflation, and healthcare. Also high up was uh, gun violence and jobs. The bottom two issues were student debt and Israel-Palestine. Climate change was 12th of 16th. Now, this is an election that will be fought on the margins, and yep. young people that are upset about those issues can swing the entire election. But I, I also was just curious for your thoughts on this. Do you think at times the press conflates young people with young lefty, especially a certain kind of online yeah. young person, and that we're kind of not thinking enough about the broader, less engaged young person who we also need. I, I agree with you. And the, the issue with, of course, polling is it just gives you like the ranking, but there's separate debate about salience, right? Yeah. Which issues do you care strongly about? So the person who puts housing high up probably does care about housing. Young people have a real problem with housing in this country. But there's also an issue where the young people who are going out and getting arrested by the police feel very strongly about what's happening, what's happening on Gaza, right? So I think it's a salience issue. And I also think, don't forget about door knockers. You know about campaigning more than I do. A lot of the people who are going to be knocking on doors are the people who care strongly about those issues like student debt yeah. or Israel-Palestine. And I'll be honest with you, I'm very worried that we're going to spend the next few months watching scenes of demonstrators, young people being arrested. The Republicans are salivating at the idea of another 1968, of another Chicago, to say, look at Biden's America, we're in chaos and crime, because crime's down, murder's down, that narrative's gone away, so now they can say, look, chaos, chaos, and Mike Johnson can turn up at Columbia. I think it's crazy, I'm glad the White House has come out and said no National Guard, they've not engaged with the National Guard nonsense. Um, but in Texas, we're seeing some crazy scenes out of UT Austin. I, I do worry about the idea that young people, a big demographic cohort of the Democratic Party base, seeing them being beaten up on TV and dragged away and detained and put in zip ties is not a helpful image when they are a crucial part of the base. And I, by the way, the people who say young people don't matter, please stop saying that. Like, Democrats could not have won in 2018, 2020, and 2022 phase, fended off a red wave without young voters. Yeah. And it does seem like it's not a messaging issue. It's not a political issue. It's a question of the reality of what's happening on the policy and on the ground. I mean, it's both, right? Yeah. Like, don't sell arms to Israel is one policy request, but also don't send in counter-terror police onto a student campus and put people in prison for no reason. Like, yeah. it's both. Those images are horrific when you see the police. You see the scenes in Austin, horrific scenes. Is that, are we in China? Are we in Venice? Where are we when yeah. we're seeing those scenes? So there was a long-ass profile of you in New York Magazine. 6,600 words, I believe. <laughs> but who's counting? And they, and they had to cut it down. They had to cut it down. That's, they left a lot of good stuff on the cutting room floor, I bet. I'm sure. The piece ends by saying that your biggest gripe with the left is that there aren't enough, there isn't enough bare-knuckle brawling. People are like, that, that guy's ready to fucking throw down. <laughs> uh, the question- Not with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's having fun. Uh, the question isn't, are you liberal, are you left, are you a progressive Democrat, are you in the squad? All not as important as the one overarching key, which is where I believe the Democrats and progressives have failed, which is fighting. Do you have fight in your belly or do you not? It's not ideological. Mehdi, who's your favorite pugnacious moderate? Who's the neo-lib that you think really gives it to them? Um, I am partial to, on the, I'm just on the, on the fighting front, yeah, on the not fight, policy front. Yeah. On the fighting front, I'm partial to a little Eric Swalwell. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I certainly don't agree with him on Gaza, but I think you look at the ads he puts out, you look at the rhetoric he puts out, you see him at committee hearings. He's not trying to go and befriend Republicans in the, you know, House gym. Okay. Unlike right. some of his friends in the Senate Democratic Caucus. Not being friends in the gym. I don't want to talk in the gym. I don't want to talk. In the I don't go to the gym, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you think about the TikTok ban? I think it's absurd. It's absurd, right? 
I mean, I trust the Communist Party of China with my data more than I trust Elon Musk. So why are we banning TikTok <laughs> and not Twitter? Although I'm on both, so. Hmm. Also, again, again, Joe Biden wants to sign a bill going into election, pissing off young people. Just mad. It's political madness. Yeah. So you just launched your new media company. I did. Called Zateo? Yeah, it's on TikTok. <laughs> we have a TikTok account. How's it going so far? Very well. In fact, so well that a piece we commissioned this week was read out to Speaker Mike Johnson on Wednesday night on CNN primetime, and he was forced to respond to a Jewish student at Columbia who we commissioned to write a piece about what's actually happening in Columbia, not the shit you're seeing online. That's cool. So, you want to, you like to be... By the way, we were inspired by you guys, partly. And I felt that. Not fully. Not fully. But I was like, look how well these crooked guys are doing. I can do that. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can have a bit of that. Yeah, we do make it look easy. Uh, now, before we go, now, you are, you want... Until I launch Hassan or Have It or something and get you Yeah. So now I'm trying to name it. My brain's doing a... Yeah, it's, 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 it's like a brain freeze for puns. It took like two All months right. just to come up with Zateo. <laughs> what does this Zateo mean? It means to seek, to inquire, to search for the truth, John. Oh, that's pretty high, Brown. It's <laughs> very ancient Greek. Yeah. Before we go, because you love to fight, you love to debate, you love to mix it up. Are you going to argue with me? Yeah. I'm challenging you to three rounds of a game we played on Positive America. That's right. It's time for the master debaters. Oh, God. Here's how it works. Never heard that pun before. <laughs> we named this an hour ago. We have three hotly debated topics. Uh, we each get 15 seconds. It's a short, very short debate. Oh, wow. We each get to make yeah. one, one point. You're, you're going to right? But we're assigning the topics randomly. Uh, which side we take. You say as you hold the cards. Well, I hand. have the topics, but okay. I don't know which side we're okay. on. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have a coin? It's 2024. Who has a coin? Does, does anyone have a coin? Someone has a coin. Wow. I'd like a, I need a coin. I forgot to get a coin. Thank you. Wow. All right. Thank you very much. Send us a bill. All right. The first topic. All right. Again, it's a 30 second to beat. The, the topic is reclining your seat is morally wrong. All right. So we're, before we, so I'm going to flip it, call it in the air. All right. Wait. You don't get to pick. All right. Heads, you're doing, it's wrong. Okay? Okay. I want tails. You got heads. You think reclining your seat is morally wrong. You'll kick us off. 15 seconds? Yeah. All right. Let's go. Uh, how can it not be morally wrong uh, to put your seat back? We are, we are on the left. We believe in community, solidarity. We're not selfish individuals. If you want to be Ronald Reagan and put your seat back and put yourself above society, that's on you, John. I care about my fellow Americans, even when I'm up in the air, 15,000 miles up in the air. You wow. be selfish. Fuck. All right, I need my 15 seconds. You selfish individualist prick. <laughs> um, I just... Hey, this doesn't count. Stop the effing clock. You gotta start the clock. He's just buying time. It's just nice to get a little lean. And if I get a little lean and you get a little lean, everybody gets a little lean. No. And then it's a, except for one row in the back that gets a little bit worse and one row in the first front that gets a little better. But that's America. <laughs> All right. Topic number two. People should be able to bring dogs everywhere. Uh, you're going to be, uh, heads will be defending it. It's heads. It's joking me. <laughs> it's just, it's how it's shook. It's that woman's quarter. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not the biggest fans of dogs. I've never made that concession in public because people will hate me for saying that. So let me say tonight, in the interest of saying that I can get things wrong, we should love dogs, bring them everywhere, because we need friends. We're all losers. All right, I'm up. My heart wasn't in that. Leave your fucking disgusting, dirty, ass-eating dog at home. We all, you, this is a supermarket. There's food at the bottom. Stop it. Where did you get this coin from? Why are my heads every time? All right. You know what? I'll just do the third one first because that's, that's, we'll do the third one first. No, I want to hear what it is all right, first. It's Marjorie Taylor Greene makes some good points. You want, want to flip or you want me to take it? You flip it. Let's flip it. All right. Let's flip it. Again, heads, you go first. It's tails. All right.
Here's the thing. CrossFit is hard. <laughs> and um, sometimes, sometimes you need a kind of creative spirit. <laughs> I didn't have it. It was a hard one. It's a really hard one. Well, yeah, now you can defend, you can say I'm wrong. Marjorie Taylor Greene doesn't have good points. <laughs> let's see your skill at work. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Um, who gives a fuck about CrossFit? Um, I'm going to wait. It's too easy. Let's give it a few more seconds. All right. Marjorie Taylor Greene said Huma Abedin and Hillary Clinton tore off the skin of a child and put it on their faces. That's Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> what else? Well, what else does that say? You know, I lost three debates so quickly. Well, I, think you won, I think you won the dog one. You think I won the dog one? He thinks I won the dog one. Uh, the, new, the new media company is Zateo. It means truth-seeking in, I want to say Latin. Greek. <laughs> Mehdi Hassan, thank you so much for being here. Very much, thanks. Appreciate it.